to my channel so today i'm going to be showing you guys how to make this cold shoulder um with boat neck dress so the first thing i did here is to cut out my the part i'm going to be using for my body so this is it here this is going to be my front panel my back panel just like how we always draw basic bodies here so the width i'm using here is going to be the widest part of your upper body and the bust i'm working with here is 45 and then i'm going divided by four plus extra one inch that's the width here so now we're, and then i have the shoulder to the waist which is 19 plus extra one inch of seam allowance that's 20. so now we'll go ahead and start putting in the measurement go up to the shoulder divide the shoulder measurement by two so the shoulder i'm working with is 15.5 divided by two is going to be about um 5.75 but I'm going to just use, uh, sorry, 7.75 is what it's going to be. So 15.5 is the shoulder divided by 2 is going to be 7.75. So I'm going to just use 7 inches here because I want the, I don't want to use the full shoulder because I want this here to go in a little bit on the shoulder. So I'm going to just use 7 inches on the dot. So instead of 7.75, it's almost as if I took away 1 inch from it. For my shoulder like i'm making a sleeveless because it's a cold shoulder and this inside of the shoulder you don't want it hanging out of the shoulder except you want it to be at the very edge of your shoulder then you can use exactly your shoulder measurement divided by two but i want it to be inside of the shoulder so that's why i took away the extra at the end so the extra is 0.75 so now i'm going to insert the armhole mark that here which is 20 divided by 2 is 10, 10 inches. So I'm going to mark that here, down here. Insert my sleeve armhole curve. And then I'm going to come down here, mark my 1 inch of shoulder slope. So guys, after drawing in my armhole, I went down to the waist here. And then divided my waist by 4. And then added 2 inches. So I have about 12 here. So now the next thing I have to do is to... I have about 11.5, sorry. And then go down here, mark your shoulder slope. And then mark your neckline, which is which I'm using three inches for now, just my basic neckline. And then I'm going to connect my uh, shoulder slope to these three inches down up here. But then at this point, I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to mark my boat sleeve. So to mark the boat neck, sorry. So to mark the boat neck, you're going to check what you have here as your shoulder slope. So I have four inches. I'm going to mark half of that four inches here. You remember how you normally mark your neckline, right? So you already have like three inches neckline here. Everything is done, right? What you're going to do is whatever you have as your shoulder slope, you're going to divide it by two. And then, so for me, I have four inches left. Because remember, my neckline is, my shoulder is seven. I marked three inches for my neckline. So what, I'm ha what I have left now is four inches here. So that four inches, I divided it by two. So now I'm going to connect it. This is going to be my new neckline. Sometimes you want the boat neck even wider. You might not do just half of it. You might increase it. Let's say you have five inches here. You might leave just two inches and then use three inches. That's if you have five inches as your shoulder slope. So it depends on you. You mustn't always do half of it, but half of it is most times the basic way. But sometimes you see the boat neck extends even longer. So you can even do and leave just about one inch here. It depends on you. So I'm just going to mark this here and then three inches of... Uh, uh, three inches of depth is what it's going to be so i'm going to connect it this way so this is going to be both the back and the front neckline because normally you know you use like one inch for the back neckline but no since this is going to be a boat neck you're going to use the same i'm going to be using the same neckline in front for the back but if you want you can also use this one inch here except this one inch at the back is going to extend up to where this this uh these two inches that you marked here is so it's always going to extend it can't be just like three inches here it's going to extend wherever the front neckline extends to so but i'm going to be using the same curve for the front as the curve at the back also so now we we'll finish marking everything i'm going to go ahead and cut it out so guys you see what i was saying the back neckline one inch here but the front neckline so i'm going to cut exactly the same thing for the front neckline back neckline also i'm going to remove it instead of using one inch one inch of depth here i'm using the same three inches i used in front for the back also so you see i also have my shoulder slope done everything is done but in front neckline i'm front armhole i'm going to go ahead and cut out that about one inch of 0 0.075 here 
So find halfway through my armhole, which is nine, uh, um, four point five here. This is just for my front neck, for my front armhole. I'm going to connect it in a straight line this way, and then in a curve this way. So I'm going to cut this out. So guys, the next thing is to go ahead and put in my darts. Uh, so all I have to do is one inch before my uh, bust line. So I'm going to insert uh, nipple to nipple first, which is about which is 10 inches divided by 2 is going to be 5 and then I'm going to come up here and put in my bust my that somewhere here one inch before my bust line and then mark half an inch on each side so this is going to be my dart here but at the back the same position is where my dart is going to be except this time it's going to extend to the chest line and then you're going to mark half an inch on each side so you see my back that is longer and then another thing you're going to do at the back is I'm going to come up here by about one inch so that it can help my zip relax better and then I'm going to blend it down into this line blend it down into this line here into the end of this part and then I'm going to cut it out I didn't reach to this end here I just cut it out like this and blended it into this line so that's basically it for my basic uh, for my bodies so now I'm going to go ahead and cut out my sleeve so guys I'm going to go ahead and insert my armhole uh, line here so my armhole divided by two I'm going to place it somewhere here come down first mark my sleeve um, my cap height and then that is somewhere here I'm going to connect it down to this part so guys, at this point, I'm going to now connect this line up to this stop here, like this. And then I'm going to find halfway through for this line, which is about, I have 12 inches here. So half of it is going to be six. And then at this point, I'm going to give it a curve going down and then a curve coming up to this part here. You're going to insert your armhole, uh, your sleeve width. So for me, that's about eight, um, 16 divided by two is eight plus one this is nine and then I'm going to connect it this way so guys as you can see I've cut this out so now to cut out my my armhole uh, the cold shoulder all you have to do is to measure out where you want the how you want the cold shoulder to come down from your shoulder so for me I want to use about Remember, you still have to leave about half an inch here that you're going to use to join the shoulder together. So I left that half an inch and came down by about, I want it to start at four inches down here. So that's here. So I'm also going to take this sleeve here and then on this side here, I'm going to come down by four inches because this is the side here that is going to meet this part. So if I'm going to start by four inches here, I'm going to also mark four inches on this part here. So guys, this is where four inches falls in. And then on this side here, you're going to measure from your shoulder to how deep you want this to go down. So this part is just the part where it meets the, the, the main body of the cloth. But this one here is from the side of your shoulder, how deep you want it to come down. So I'm going to do like five inches on this side. But guys, remember, if you go deeper than that, it might start gaping open. So be careful. Any any little uh, measurement that you use here, it amounts to a lot when you cut it out. So just be careful how much you use. But I'm going to use like 4.5 instead of 5 inches because um, even, even like this 4 inches is going to still look big. So that's what I'm trying to explain here. So you're going to just connect this line to this one here. And then I'm going to cut this out. So this is going to be my cold shoulder part here. So I'm going to go ahead and use bias to finish this part uh, up and then I'm going to use this part here now to attach. So you see, when I attach this into the armhole, starting from these four inches, I'm also going to notch it so I know that this is where it's supposed to start and then I'm going to fit in my sleeve here. So if you're looking at it now, you see, this is the part that is going to be open. So you see, this is where it's going to be open. So this, my four inches is going to start here and then my sleeve is going to fit right into this armhole like this. And then I'm going to have this cold shoulder. So I'm going to go ahead and join everything. And then we'll come back and cut the bottom part.
and joined it as you can see i've used bias to finish the neckline for mine so first you join the shoulder you put in your darts you put in the sleeve starting from that four inches and then you also before you put in the sleeve you're going to first use bias to finish the end of that sleeve and then you're going to join it to the body of this here after that you use bias to finish it off so i'm going to show you guys with this side so as you can see in this one here I just put in the sleeve at first I took the sleeve finished the edge with bias and then after that then from the inside I now took another piece of bias to finish it up so I just sewed it down so that after that I can now fold it this way and then I'll use it to finish up the rough end so basically guys how you're going to join it is just take this piece of the your sleeve you're going to finish up this rough end at the top this rough end at the top here so you see i use bias bias to turn mine over after that i just followed the part where i notched that four inches that is going to join the sleeve attached it here sew down my sleeve on both sides in front and at the back and then after that i cut another piece of bias here just to use it to sew down but you're going to come in like about one inch into where your sleeve is so you see this is where my sleeve is and as you can see this bias that is going to run on top of the sleeve goes in about one inch into it you see it comes down into the sleeve so all i have to do now is to turn it this way and then i'm going to just sew it down this way so after i i sew it down like this it's going to look like this one here on this side so that's basically how you're going to do it as you can see my bias on this one goes into my sleeve you see it runs inside of this sleeve about one inch in this is my sleeve it comes in one inch in here on on both sides so that's basically how you do it this one here is done i'm just going to go back in and finish up the other side but i'm going to be adding a box split to it so how you're going to do that is you're going to measure around your waist you can use get out of about three times your waist let's say your waist around your waist measurement is 20. you can use three times of it which is going to be 60 or you can use 2.5 times of it so that's like 50 so it depends on you what you want to do how many times how gather do you want if you want a lot of gather use a lot of pleat use three times three of your waist measurements if you want like moderate gather use 2.5 so whatever your waist the waist i'm working with here is 38 i'm using 2.5 of it that's times 2.5 whatever i got is going to be the length sorry the width of this gather going down so that's the width of the fabric that i cut out and then also your how you're going to get the length is basically subtract your shoulder to waist from the full length of the dress and then whatever is left is going to be the length here so for me i have 28 left and then I added about 1.5 to it for my seam allowance. So in total, I have about 30 inches for the length here. So that I can be able to fold the rough end and then use it half an inch to join this part to the body of the cloth. So now this is what I'm working with here. And I also want to, I also plan on adding a pocket to mine. So I've already uh, cut it how it's going to be. I've already made several videos on how to do this here. So all I have to do now is to just go ahead and start putting in my box pleat. So guys, like I said, I already have a video on how to put in your pleat. So I'm going to start with one end here. Basically, I just fold it facing this way and then pin it down. And then I, I fold another one facing this direction and then pin it down. Just like that, I'm going to keep going. So one will face this way and then the other one is going to face the opposite direction this way right and then the next one is going to face this way you see and then the next one is going to face the opposite way just like that this way this way this way this way that's how you're going to keep going so you can see this is already forming the pleats here so you see my pleats are already forming like this so all i have to do is just to pleat it to the end and then i'm going to attach it the bottom to the top part and put in my zip at the back see i've gone ahead and finished it up this is the neckline this is the sleep part here so this is how the bottom part looks yeah the box split part here so that's basically it and then it's going to have a zip at the back so that's basically what it looks like so this is for a client so i'm not going to be trying it out and yeah thank you guys so much for watching please like share and subscribe bye